Welcome back to Walsall Fan TV. We're coming up to the Easter weekend and uh, got some tough games. Uh, the first of those is MK Dons away. And Jonathan Harris is the uh, the voice from uh, MK. I bet you were thinking top three. You're going to be all right for top three. And uh, Stockport, what happened then? Uh we we froze on Sky. That's all all I can say. First of all, thank you for having me on again. Real pleasure as always. And uh, yeah, all hopes were on Stockport. We got on a bit of a run. We'd uh, we'd got ourselves in prime position to take advantage of any slip ups. And uh, unfortunately, we played well the first half an hour. Probably should have been ahead. And then first chance that they had, they scored goalkeeping error, and it just Went downhill from there, really. Um, they're, very clinical, they're very clinical, weren't they? Stop ball. Honestly, yeah, honestly, it was it was it was much like the Bradford away game a couple of months back, where they just every shot that they had went in, and we were just poor after that first half an hour. And uh, Stockport deservedly won, and they deservedly they deserved to go up. Um, what was what we're talking about, Stockport? They've been off it, haven't they? Yeah, I mean, they've sort of come back with a storm, obviously getting uh, Carl Wooten and uh, Madden's back fit and that sort of thing as a, a big bonus for them. Um, so I was wondering, um, I, I'd speak to Craig, who's a Stockport fan, and uh, I was wondering about getting him onto my predictions things. So I do a predictions uh, breakdown as we on the running. And uh, I was going to ask him whether he thinks they'll still make top three. Uh, that was before Saturday, obviously. That win has really given big help. Um, MK, as it stands, played 40 and three points off Wrexham, who've got a game in hand. So that's there's still stuff, it's still to play for for you, but it is looking more at the minute like um, playoffs. Does that scare is, you, playoffs? Is. Yes, if if you look at MK Don's record in the playoffs, you'll know why I'm scared and I, I really wanted automatic promotion. Um, I think what's, what's in our hands is that Wrexham have got Mansfield on Good Friday and then last game of the season, they've got Stockport. So Whoa. they could still be, like, yeah, they could still be, uh, they've still got to do what they've got to do and we've just got to be there and pounce on any sort of... Uh, any weakness that they uh, that they do and uh, yeah the playoffs scare me because at the minute we're fourth so at the minute we don't know who's going to finish seventh because it could be one of any of about seven or eight teams that could finish seventh so we're a well, bit so I've done a video I've done a video it was a two-part video looking at Morecambe Newport and Crawley and then the second one with Warsaw Wimbledon and Gillingham or something like that, because those six teams are all competing for seventh. Crawley are in the pound seats, of course. Um, that was before their win at the weekend. Um, they're on. They played thirty-eight, the same as Warsaw. They're just three points clear of Warsaw. So, from uh, from Warsaw's point of view, I think early doors. I was uh, thinking a top half finish would be a good result, and uh, hoping for maybe top ten. But really, my my objective is to be involved in the end of season shake up, and uh, at the moment, Warsaw are in it. Warsaw are in it, and it's nice to be involved. If we were to make playoffs, um, that would be a great season, really. Uh, Warsaw are building and have been improving, but losing Freddie Draper in January has uh, been a bit of a kick. And uh, a few more injuries as well. So it's left the Warsaw squad a little bit thin on the ground. Um, so that's giving us some challenges. But um, it's nice to be in the, in and about, in and around it sort of thing. Now, for Warsaw, a playoff would be a bonus. So for MK, a playoff would be a, a disappointment, wouldn't it? Uh, probably not. I, I did, at the start of the season, say playoffs as, as minimum thinking that Wrexham and Notts County would all be up there after the, what they did in the National League Stockport 
had a good end to the season and we're always going to be challenging. Mansfield, we're always going to be up there. Um, I actually thought Salford might be up there challenging, but that hasn't happened. Um, obviously, we've had a couple of surprise teams in Barrow and Crew, who've been really sort of yeah. consistent yeah. and under the radar as well. And considering when we appointed Mike Williamson, we were 18th to be in this position now. You, I'd have snapped your hand off. So, <laughs> yeah, Graham, Graham Alexander didn't work out very well for you, did he? No, no, the fans never took to him. The chair, what do you think I think what, the football, what do you think that is? Jonathan, what do you think they just, uh, just didn't get with him? Just the style of football, to be honest. I mean, there's nothing wrong with his style of football. It, it's worked in the past, it, it's worked to an extent with Bradford City and, uh, Obviously, we went there and got absolutely pumped at Bradford a few weeks ago. Um, but I just think his style of football, his his approach of hitting it long and going from there didn't appease our fan base. And we've got a saying um, of the MK way where we can play out from the back and play through yeah. the thirds. Yeah. And Mike Williamson's just come in and obviously with his Gateshead side previously, he had that in abundance. So... It's just fit like a glove, and we've gone from strength to strength since then. Um, he's, he's brought one of his former players in, hasn't he? Stephen Wern. Um, three goals, five assists in 11 games since his arrival in January. Um, I bet you're happy with him, aren't you? I am, particularly since he's keeping um, Dan Kemp out the side as well, who was obviously had that good first half of the season for Swindon. Um yeah. He's really energetic. He's played all across the front three. Um, when we had a striker crisis, he played up top against Swindon, scored twice. Very intelligent footballer, knows where the space is. Um, real good uh, um, real good link up with Lofthouse on that side as well. They know each other from Gateshead. And uh, yeah, he was a sniff. Apparently, we only signed him for £60,000 from Gateshead. So it seems a real bargain at the minute. Yeah, it does. Um, how about the uh, the young striker you've got from Stoke, uh, Tezgel? Um, what uh, what do you make of him, Emery Emery Tezgel? Uh, uh, he's he's improving. He's he's certainly certainly not the worst we've had. Um, I think he struggled at the weekend against Stockport. Um, obviously against defenders that are twice the size and like more experienced than him, he he really struggled. Um. We've had a lot of striker um, injuries recently, probably like yourselves, where Max Dean's been out for a long time. He's came back against Stockport for half an hour. Matt yeah. Dennis, he scored two. He scored three goals in four games, and now he's got injured. Ellis Harrison, he's more of an impact player rather than a, a starter. And uh, yeah, hopefully with uh, Max Dean on his. Uh, back on Friday, hopefully, and um, Jack Tucker is playing a behind closed doors game today ahead of Friday. Fingers crossed, will be slightly stronger than than we were on Saturday. Uh, Alex Gilby, what's happened to him? He's phenomenal. He is absolutely phenomenal. He's, he's not, he's he's not been playing, has he? No, he, he's he's played. He's uh he has played. He's played a lot of games. He's scored a lot of goals recently and assists, and he's really dragged the team. The team up. Um, he plays on the left hand side with uh, Joe Tomlinson, and they've got a real good connection. What um, number is he by Alex Gilby? Uh, number eight. Number eight. He's yeah. one we got to watch then. Uh, Jack Payne. Um, Jack Payne, I like. Yep. Yeah. If you like Jack Payne, you'll like number 50, Lewis Bate, as well. He's definitely one to watch. Got him on loan from Leeds United. Um, apparently, Bate. he's out of contract. Yeah. He's out of contract in the summer and he's out of favour with Daniel Farker. So any team that snaps him up in the summer is one heck of a player. And I Lewis say Pat, what number do you say? 50. 50. Yeah. He's one we're going to watch then. We'll be looking to snap him up. <laughs> yeah. You say he's doing well for you as well, though. He is. He's uh he's he's really sort of He's a he's classed as a defensive midfielder. Like him and Jack Payne have got to sort of cover the centre backs when they go forward. But 
yeah. his ability on the ball and his um, awareness to get away from players that, that he can have his back to goal and he can turn in on a sixpence and start an attack. And yeah. he made a mistake on Saturday for the second goal, but that's probably his only mistake that he's made since he's really started for MK Dons in January. Yeah. I think um, in, in that defensive midfield role we've got sort of a couple of players really for there so i think that's probably not somewhere we'll be looking to strengthen um one thing i want to talk about is uh the strange one over michael kelly because he, he got promoted with carlisle and then they released him so what was all that about um well actually michael kelly was brought in because we had a bit of a goalkeeper crisis around um when graham alexander was was manager. Um, we started the season with Craig McGivray. Um, yeah. He was doing okay. Then former, we former Walsall goalie. Former Walsall goalie is now at Stevenage on loan. Um, then when Williamson came in, he he played him until January and then signed Aston Villa goalkeeper Philip Marshall. Pretty much the first tran- like first day of the transfer window, yeah. and McGivray wanted the move to Stevenage because he knew he wasn't going to play. So, um, but then Marshall had a real bad couple of games, particularly at home, and the fans were really getting on his back. And then yeah. he seems to have picked up an injury and uh, <laughs> has only just come back. Um, it's so, pride hurt, perhaps. Yeah, yeah that's what <laughs> I'm, either that or Mike Williamson's just taken him out of the, the limelight just to, because he's only yeah. 19 or 20. And um, to be fair to Michael Kelly, he's come in, saved two penalties. Um, yes, he made that mistake on Saturday, but I think that's genuinely his only mistake he's made. And he's a real solid goalkeeper. And I'm really surprised another club didn't snap him up, to be fair. Yeah, I was going to say he was without a club for a while, wasn't he? Which after getting, getting his team promoted is a, a big surprise. Um, Form wise, MK um, won six out of the last seven at home, um, only failing to win against uh, Wrexham, of course, one apiece. Previous to that, we go back to 20th of January, Morecambe defeat. What did you make of the Morecambe defeat? What went wrong there? Uh, first half, we were brilliant. We got an early goal. We didn't capitalise. Uh, their goalkeeper, Archie Mayer, had one of those halves where he was saving everything. And then second half, they changed it around, went two up top, um, scored a scrappy equaliser. And then our former striker, Charlie Brown, came off the bench, um, robbed Dean Lewington of the ball, ran through and, and scored. And uh, as you say, since then, our home form's been really good. Yeah. Uh, it should read seven from seven. I don't know if you saw the highlights from the Wrexham game where the ball clearly went over the line um, from a Tomlinson shot. The goalkeeper pushed it back from well behind the line and even he knew as well. So really, we should have probably beaten Wrexham as well. Yeah. If we'd done that, we'd be we'd be right up there with Wrexham, put it that way. So that feels like it's it could be a pivotal moment. And uh, yeah. I think we've got a second best home form in the league behind Wrexham last time I looked. Yeah, so. I was going to say you, you're fairly strong at home. Um, some interesting away results. Um, beating Mansfield was a good one. Yep. Um, but then losing to Grimsby was. Uh, we had we had fun when we went to Grimsby. We beat them six <laughs> one. It, that's our massive Achilles heel is our away form. It really is. I mean, a lot of our games have been tight. Um, we drew 0-0 with Newport. We narrowly, narrowly lost to Barrow. We narrowly lost in the 94th minute to AFC Wimbledon, which still really hurts. Um, we obviously yeah, got... Yeah, trouble, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. We, uh, we got pumped by Bradford. We got well beat by Doncaster start of the year, obviously the Stockport game as well. And I think our away form is going to be the, the difference between automatics and, and playoffs, to be honest, because you look at how consistent the top three are away from home compared to us, it's night and day. 
Yeah. Yeah, I can see. The um so coming on to Friday night or Friday afternoon even. Um, I'm coming down I'm coming down for the game, looking forward to it. Um Walsh will be wearing the green, no doubt, because you'll have your uh, white shirts on. Um, is it a game Warsaw can get points out of? Um, it's going to be tough, I think, isn't it? Because uh, MK are on good form. But the uh, psychologically, after the Stockport result, most of the time is when a team gets beat heavily, um, they go all out for a clean sheet in the following game and sort of holds them back a little bit. So um, a nil-nil wouldn't be a shocking result, I don't think. I mean, I, I, I'd take a clean sheet, uh, obviously, after what happened at, at Stockport. Um, I think what you'll find is we'll have a real fast start to the game. That seems to be our our thing at the minute at home. Um a lot of our games, we've scored three goals quite quickly as well. So if we score one, be wary of conceding again and again. Um, yeah. I think our, our weakness and what I what I seem to be is your strength is set pieces. We're still oh, not we're doing, strong. We're doing very well on set pieces. In previous years, we've never won, scored from a corner. And it uh, seems like most games, we get a goal from a corner now. Yeah, so I, I can see I can see you getting success from there. I can see, um, especially someone like Jamil Matt, if he plays, I think he can well, get a lot of success. Jamil, Walsh had been on a really good run, um, but then we had a, a poor game against um, Forest Green away when everybody seemed off it. Um, Jamil Matt got uh, injured, went off, and then the last couple of games... Without uh, Jamil Matt, um, we've really missed him. Um, early season, he, he didn't look half the player he, we were expecting him to be. But then of late, he's sort of got back to fitness and he's, um, he's been a massive boost for the team. Um, on set pieces, both attacking and defensively, he's, uh, he's been very strong, getting his head to the ball and that sort of thing. So um, if he's back, which we're hoping he will be, uh, for Friday, that'll be a big boost for Warsaw. Um, Tom Knowles, um, probably the most frustrating player for Warsaw. Uh, he plays right wing back, a very quick feet, very energetic, got great engine on him, loves to go past players. Um, it's just his final ball is the frustration. Well, uh, he's injured, he's injured, so that's uh, caused us a bit of a problem. Um, all, all the people frustrated with him, um, including myself, realise how much he offered to the team. So uh, he's been out for the last couple of games, and that's a bit of a loss. Um, young Joe Folks has come in, and he's done well, but he's more of a fullback than a wingback. So he's not so comfortable coming forward, but he's uh, he does okay. He does okay. But I think, yeah, I think we're probably a bit weakened, really. Um. An interesting game is going to be Emery Tezgel against uh, David Cagbu because they're both stout boys. Ooh. So uh, that, that'll be a that'll be an interesting one. Um, if he goes, uh, he's playing more central at the moment. Uh, Kagbu, central of the back three. Um, of course, Warsaw's main back line are all injured. Um, Donovan Daniels is out. Uh, Priest Farkson's uh, out, and uh, and then we have got some other other potential centre halves out as well. So we've got a very young back line with uh, David Kagbu, um, Manny Adibayaga is uh, a guy who's on loan from Norwich. He's very good. He's very good. Um, we've got a, a song we sing for him. He scores when he wants because he he's, he scored two goals in his first three games. Um, so uh, so that was really good. Um, and then left sided centre half Taylor Allen. Now I've admitted I'm wrong about him because when he had his contract renewed, I thought that's a waste of a, a waste of a contract because I thought he's never going to play. And he has, he's hardly had a game. 
But since he's come in at left-sided centre-half, he's been excellent. He really has been excellent. He's got a very good left foot, set-piece delivery. Um, and he comes forward a bit sometimes as well. So um, that's it's sort of like a back three that we've sort of stumbled upon, really. But um, it's, it's going well. Um, the CDM, Brandon Comley, has been off on international duty. He should be back. So, uh, he's doing well. Then in the midfield, Hutch, Isaac Hutchinson, I think he's the one that you know you got to watch out for. 11 goals, 9 assists. And uh, alongside him, uh, Jack Earing, perhaps, or we might go for Ross Tierney. So that's they don't generally have a bit of a switch. And then uh, we've got Liam Gordon, the left wing back. He's on, been on international duty. Last time he went on international duty, he came back on fire. So uh, hopefully that's going to be the same again. Um, and then up front... If Jamil Matt's fit, it'll be him and Josh Gordon. Uh, they're not the most prolific. So as far as goal threat from the centre forwards, um, it's not that great. But getting goals from elsewhere and from the set pieces is uh, what we need to get us through, I guess. Um, looking at the stats, uh, you guys, 11 points clear of us with, and we've got two games in hand. So I think our chances of catching you are um, fairly uh, difficult, I think. Three points on Friday would help. But uh, I think I would be happy with a point. Um, I think we've got Salford at home on Monday. And if we get four points, if we get four points from those two games, we are still in it and uh, ready for the running. Um, but um, if we don't get four points, um, then perhaps we might slip away a little bit. So it's a tough one, and I'm sure I'm sure you guys aren't going to make it easy for us. You're not going to relax, relax. You're in the playoffs now. Let's just chill out. Let Warsaw have the ball. <laughs> no, definitely not. I, I I still believe the squad think that they can get top three. There's still plenty of games to go. We've got six to play. Um, I think if we win all six, we stand a heck of a chance. But our double head is you on Friday, and then we're away to Notts County on Easter Monday. Um, so away to Notts really County, yeah. County yeah. fell away massively, haven't they? They they have, and I think they've got a um, they've obviously got a man a, a rookie manager in in the EFL and. It's so hard to replace someone like Luke Williams. Uh, obviously, see what he's starting to do with Swansea now. And uh, we had him as an assistant coach when we had Russell Martin. And yeah. so got nothing nothing but praise for the job Luke Williams did for MK Dons. Um, just to say, if we can win our final six games of the season, then see what happens. If we get playoffs, then we get playoffs. Um, I think first leg if we finish fourth is away from home which is a bit daunting yeah but i don't think we'll know who if we finish fourth i don't think we'll know who we face until the last day of the season um to be fair because anyone can grab that seventh spot that is i've never known a league two like this where so many teams are still in the reckoning with well, you, know, we, games to play. you know we've got last match of the season no we're away to wimbledon Oh, oh! Can you imagine if if it was the winner takes all? Well, that's what the uh, my friend Lee is. Uh, he's touted that for a long time. He says that'll be the uh, the playoff for seventh. Oh, which uh, wow. it could very well be, but um, it could because they're up there. It's it's ob it's going to be a big game for both of us, hopefully, or well. For at least one of us, but maybe both of us. Um, Crawley, though, Crawley are in the pound seats, but they've got some tough games, Crawley. Yeah, they've got they've got made a made a fist of it though. They're doing well recently. They grew a stockport the other week, and I think people are underestimating Crawley. I think the stuff from off the pitch is letting a lot of fan bases think that they're not as good as they actually are, but um 
twice yeah. I've seen them this season. They've played really well. So I think Crawley could be the, the ones to possibly sneak in. I know my, my friend Luke has touted them to win the playoffs. So we'll have to wait and see. Well, I'd say they've a way win at Tranmere, drew at home to Stockport, beat County at not County at home. Um, at home to Doncaster. Doncaster improved, haven't they? They have. Yeah, they're they're obviously they're not going to get near the playoffs, but I mean they're they're on a bit of a march. So then Crawley after that, Crawley away to Newport, who have uh, found form again. Then they're away to Mansfield. Then they're away to Wrexham. Then, wow. uh, then at home to Colchester, who revived. Then they're at home to Barrow. So uh, by that wow. point, by that point, they might be struggling. Then they're Sutton away, and then Grimsby at home to finish the last two. So uh, they could drop out and then come back in for the last games. Yeah. So it's a bit of a, it's a spicy run up. Spicy uh, running, I suppose I should say. So, um, yeah, yeah, what's your yeah. what's your prediction for the game on Friday? Well, I'm going to say two what two one MK Dons. I think um, I think Tescal might get the opener. I think you'll equalise from a set piece, <laughs> and then I think Max Dean will come off the bench and and score. And uh, yeah, I, I just think. Every time we've lost under Mike Williamson, we've won the next game on the stats. So if that yeah. form continues, yeah. then we're due a win, unfortunately, for you on the on Good Friday. <laughs> okay. The um you've not drawn many games, you've only drawn seven. I know. I think I, when I, it gets not... to when it gets to the last 15 minutes, if it's still you're still drawing, you're gonna throw everything at us, aren't you? Yep. But that, yep. there's always a risk then of the counter attack, isn't there? Because we have uh, Mal Fall, who uh, generally plays off the bench. Um, he's got plenty of pace and good skills. He's not a great finisher, in fairness. Not at the moment, not yet. But um, his time will come, I think. I think he scored against us when he was with Doncaster at the start of the season. I, 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 he? Oh, I remember. He'd be prime he, he was, he was game. game. Yeah. He was what? I said he was brilliant that game for Doncaster. He he gave he was being marked by yeah he was being marked by Cameron Norman that game and he gave Cam Norman an absolute he gave him a real hard game. I'm mean, not yeah. we won the game but it was Doncaster played their part in it. Yeah, I think with with Mal Farley, he's one of those players similar to uh, Elijah Adebayo that was with Warsaw and now was at Luton, of course. Initially, he looked like uh, a bit ponderous, sort of a bit sort of gangly. But he's got some real good skills. But it's his finishing. It's it's just not. It's that composure in front of goal. Uh, if you see the highlights from one of our recent games, I forget which one it was now. But um, he just needed to pout the ball over the line, and he pout it to the keeper. Like the keeper was covering sort of like a fifth of the goal, and he pout it to the keeper, pretty much. With the goal gaping, it's uh oh, it did the rounds on Twitter. It was like uh, oh, shocking really, but um, it's one of them, isn't it? It's one of them. Right then, thanks for coming on, Jonathan. Um, no problem. Where do, where's where's a good place to go and eat before the match? Uh, well, there's plenty of places around the away end because it's it's like a little food court behind the away end at Stadium MK. So there's a um, there's a McDonald's, there's a KFC, there's a Italian place. I think there's a Nando's possibly as well. So there's oh, plenty of TGI Fridays. Oh, TGI so, Fridays. Yeah. Oh, we like a bit of that. We like a bit of that. Well, um, I'll be down there. I'm going to see where we find our food. We might sort of park a little bit further away and then uh, grab a weather spoons or something and then have a walk in, but we'll see. Nice one. Um, Armchair Blues fan says, I really appreciate the content you put out. Thank you very much for that. Uh, well done, fellas, says the abandoned hunter. Don't forget Casbar. What's Casbar? Oh, that's a... Uh, so that Casbar is situated... At the home end at gate 
got to remember this. Yeah, gate six, outside gate six of the home end, and it's like a little van that sells real quality burgers and, and hot dogs. Um, oh, it's only know. like, it's like, a, it's only there for the pre-match, but it's real good quality food. Okay, well, if we're running late, we'll, uh, we'll maybe sort of dig into that. Uh, that's really good. Um, everybody watching the channel, hope you enjoy it. Um, like, comment and subscribe and all that. Um, we have got other stuff on. We've got sort of match predictions for the running and uh, our predictions league. So we're sort of digging into that. And uh, and if you like a read, you can always get into my writing stuff. But um, I'll put a message in the description for that. Right then. Thanks very much, Jonathan. The joy and the pain. The joy and the pain. <laughs> Cheers, mate. Thanks again.